Chicago, sir? Evanston? No, no call for Evanston. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Ah, those buses always run late this hour. Traffic. It's gonna be a hot one tonight, eh? Yeah. Oh, I wonder how they stand it in the tropics. They're born into it. Yeah, yeah, I guess that does make a difference. That's for me, though, you know, tropics. <laughs> You ever been there? During the war. I didn't make it. Bum ticket. See much action? A little. Where were you? Okinawa. Mm -hmm. Furthest I ever got off Hollywood Boulevard was Yosemite. We used to go up there in the summers, you know, before things got tough. Hard going, huh? Ah, uh, lately. What do you do for a living? Research. I better be getting home. I think I stopped off to get a couple of shots. Thanks. That's what you mean. Vodka on the rocks with a lemon twist. Little twist or a big twist? You look like the big twist type. Shop when he's down and out. You're very bright. I'm in a silly spot, that's what I am. Look, I forgot my wallet or I lost it, I don't know. But I do know that man's gonna want his money. I can't sit here all night with a warm martini. I understand. Uh, how about letting me buy you a cold one? From that last remark, I can see you don't understand. Send it to you in the morning. I sound as if you mean it. Here's my license. You can copy the serial number down. 
Marie Gardner, 807 North Broadway. The serial number is usually here in the upper right-hand corner. So it is. Please. Well, everybody seems pretty busy. Check, please. 70. Out of five. Wait a minute. Can I buy you a drink? No girl ever has. What's that you're drinking? Vodka. And I'll have another martini. Mind if I just look? See anything familiar? Familiar looks very different. You make it a habit of rescuing girls in bars? Only girls who drink martinis on empty purses. How come you're in here in the first place? My girlfriend stood me up for dinner. I didn't want to eat alone. But it's all right to drink alone. I was hoping I'd run into somebody nice to talk to. A girl like you? The men I usually run into don't want to talk to anybody but their wives or secretaries. They seem to think conversation's old-fashioned. You sound bitter. The case hardened. Guys have probably been swarming around you ever since your second teeth came through. Maybe you're disillusioned, I don't know. But I don't think to the point where you're ready to throw all men aside. Do I hear a click? Yes. I uh, like to skip all the jockeying around. It saves a lot of grief later on. What makes you think there's going to be a later on? I, uh... You mean like a dinner, maybe? As long as we understand each other. I'd uh, certainly appreciate it. You sound like a man with a problem. Vanning. Jim Vanning's my name. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I got problems. Who hasn't? Oh, Mrs. Fraser. Hello, Mr. Fraser. Tired? A little, yeah. Anything new? Still checking. Banning still there? Yeah. I talked to him tonight. You talked to him? Well, you know, I went up and asked him for a light. Did he say anything? Nothing I could use. Life's a tough one. I took your brown suit to the cleaners today. Uh-huh. You could use another pair of shoes. I'll wait for the sales. You never buy yourself anything. <laughs> I do all right. You do fine. Someday you'll be important. Honey, there's nothing important about being an insurance investigator. Boy, I wish this one was over with. You'll handle it. Mm. Thanks. You didn't get much work done this afternoon, you know. I just kept walking up and down his room. Kept looking at the calendar he's got tacked up in the back of the closet door. Do you think he knows he's being watched? I had the glasses on him. He, he, he kind of grows on you. You know what I mean, Lawrence? Almost, almost like he needs protection. What you need is a drink and some lamb stew. Come on. Okay. I still don't understand it. A lot of nice people get together in bars and restaurants. Yeah, to cry on each other's shoulders. Or go back to their wives the next morning. Is that a question? Do I look like a married man? You've told me so little about yourself, you might be any one of several people. Or the creature from 20,000 fathoms. I was just curious. What time is it? Early. I have an 8 o'clock sitting in the morning and a 12 o'clock fashion show. You're a model? How do you think I pay the rent? Well, I, I should have figured you're being a model. I mean, uh, believe it or not, I'm 
I'm an artist. <laughs> soup cans or sunsets? Soup cans, toothpaste, automobiles, and girls once in a while. I bet you must be good at it. I, uh, freelance, work in my own place. I do all right. I, uh, have a rush job for a magazine store. You, you wouldn't pose for me, would you? I'm expensive. But for you, I'll waive the fee. <laughs> You're actually smiling. Back there at the bar, you acted as though you had some big trouble on your shoulders. They come and they go. Troubles? Smiles. Did you write your phone number and address for me? I forget things. Not important things, I hope. How about tomorrow? All right. Pick me up at Robinson's, Beverly Hills. I should be finished around 2 o'clock. you were talking about? First part, any questions about the rest of it? You mean the later, later on? No questions. Providing you don't ask any. Okay. All right, Rayburn. Thanks, Miss. You can go now. Did a nice job getting our friend here so relaxed. Why, you... You do your talking later. You run along home now. Forget you ever saw this character. You're not gonna run anymore, are you? No. Come on, we'll all get out on the beach. Get some breeze. We're gonna need clear heads. You've been giving us a bad time, Raven. What are you calling yourself these days? Anyway, you cost us a lot of money trying to find you. And it ain't deductible, either. You shut up. <laughs> I don't mind that. I like the way you handle yourself. When you didn't go to the police. Fat chance. <laughs> and two, you didn't make trouble. You just disappeared. I like that, too. Well, it's a little too soon for you to disappear. And now all you gotta do is tell us what we wanna know, and we'll let you out, and you can go home. We're not even going to tell the cops. I got a picture of that. You're going to tell us sooner or later? Something I can't do. Well, that's because you're tough. But after we get you where you're not so tough anymore, you're going to tell us. You'll say anything we want you to say. I'm not trying to get hurt. If I knew, I'd tell you. <sighs> that's in the hearts and flowers department. You know where that'll get you? Nowhere. We'll all be nowhere. He's too tough, John. A lot too tough. What do you say, John? I say he's too tough. I'm not tough. I'm scared stiff. Oh, now he's being funny. You want to drive, John? Let me sit back there with him. Ah, uh, you take it easy, Red. You hold on a little while. You can have your fun later. Fun? The tougher they are, the more fun they are, Trala. <laughs> better? Yeah. Look, Red, tonight's his night. Might be a short one, might be a long one, but he's gonna keep breathing until we get an answer out of him. You got that? Oh, John, you got a soft spot. Like the top of your head. That's your whole trouble, you know that? 
The top of your head never closed up when you were a kid. Neither did your mouth. Smart boy. No identification, no address. That way, if he's got it where he's living, we don't know where he's living at. What about laundry tanks? Now, what if you found a mark on his collar? What would you do with it, huh? Well, now, the police are always tracing guys with laundry tanks. Huh. Well, well, well. Marie Gardner, 807 North Normandy. Must be the one he was with tonight. Welcome back, friend. Why don't you get it over with? That's a switch. What do you think I'm going to do, kill you? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to kill me. Could have been any time since last winter, so it's tonight. He's acting pretty cool. Why not? 350,000 claims, why couldn't he be cool? I guess it's the money, huh? Gives you that nice, easy feeling. I don't know where the money is. Now, say that again. Say it over to yourself and see how ridiculous that sounds. Don't know where the 350,000 is. That's the way it is. Nice suit. I like it. Pick it out yourself? Yes. Expensive? Not bad. Not the kind of suit I'd buy if I had all that money you're talking about. Now, listen, you got a fair amount of intelligence. You're on one side, I'm on the other, so we'll take it from there, huh? Now, if you want to stay alive, in order for you to have a nice, long, happy middle age, you're going to tell us where you put that cash. And we're going to keep you here till we get it. Then we'll let you go. Make sense? Makes wonderful sense, but I can't tell you where the money is because I don't know where it is. Does that make sense? No, no, it doesn't. I can see a man misplacing a tenner or maybe even a hundred. But I just don't tabulate. He's going to let a big boodle like that slip through his fingers. And that brings us to another angle. If you lost that loot, you lost it up in Wyoming in the Jackson Hole country. And that means you wouldn't be here. Because if you didn't have it, you'd be up there looking for it, right? Wyoming's a big place. 350,000 is big money. Most people I know would be up there with a magnifying glass going over every inch of the state. We're getting nowhere. Now put yourself in my place. I'm real hungry for that cash. I'm so hungry for it, I'm even liable to cut you in for a slice. 50,000. How's that sound? Sounds great, but I tell you, I don't know where it is. That final? As far as I'm concerned, there is final words. No, not yet, not final. Get up! Now, don't get any ideas about night watchmen. You got all the company you're gonna get right now. Come on. Okay, honey, go back to sleep. Can I get you something? No. What is it? Why can't you sleep? Oh, angles, angles, I can't figure. Oh, you'll work it out? Yeah. With what I've got now, I could take him in tomorrow. With what they've got on him in Chicago, it's 100 to 1 he'd get the chair. The money would still be missing. That's why it's, it's hard to go to sleep. Well, if that's what he deserves. If. Is there an if? I can only talk to him, really talk, you know, get him to tell me just what happened. But Ben, you're doing all you can. Yeah, that's what's driving me crazy. It's the best shadow job I've ever done. I know every move he makes. It's gotten to the point I can drop him at night and pick him up again in the morning. I know he likes split pea soup for lunch. He leaves a dime tip when, you know, sometimes he should have left 15 cents. He washes his own socks at night. He goes to sleep with the radio on. Oh, incidentally, it's got a bum tube. Static is terrible. 
Yeah, I know everything about him except what I need to know. He's clever then, living the way he does and hiding the money. Maybe. Or maybe he's innocent. You keep feeling that, don't you? He can't be alone in this. There's, there's got to be more than a single in the picture. I've been walking in his footsteps for three months, day after day, hour after hour. I've been through his room when he was out. I've been living his life, practically. You know, I, I feel as if I, I understand this man, as if I, I really know him. Well, I'm glad you followed me, Ben. Eleven years ago. Really glad. <laughs> yeah, and you'd be even glad if we could get back to sleep tonight. Huh? Oh, honey, look at the time. Once every five seconds. Watch. One, two, three, four, five. How's your memory now, friend? Now think back. You were out camping. Wyoming, just you and your pal, the doc, right? Well, maybe you'll remember what you did with the money. Our money. Better pack up and get out of here. The temperature's dropping below freezing. The weather station reports a snowfall of eight inches in the mountains and more coming. They're closing down the highway north of here. If that cold front moves in on us, we're really in trouble. Cold or no cold, Doc, right now we're going to eat trout. Fried the only way to fry them. Plenty of butter and breadcrumbs. Yeah. And I've always been a cornmeal man myself. Doc, you stick to the medicine, I'll stick to the cooking. That's a deal. Come well, on, what do you think we ought to do? Do what the man said. Take the road south first thing in the morning. We haven't even had two weeks of this, and I could use two months. No deadlines to meet, no art directors calling in the middle of the morning. <laughs> How about you? You ready for surgery? <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> anyway, we came to do some hunting. What's it going to look like if we get back to Chicago without a set of horns? How about that big buck we saw yesterday morning across the valley? Standing there like the Statue of Liberty. Beauty, wasn't he? Why didn't you shoot? Why didn't you? You know, I think you're right. The bread comes out better than the cornmeal. <laughs> Great coffee, huh? Eh. Better than I ever got in the Navy. <laughs> you know, you'll make some gal a good husband. Oh, yeah. She uh, just hasn't come along yet. Is that it? Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, you'll know it when she does. It's like I knew Eva was right for me. Of course, I suppose 20 years does make a lot of difference. Probably a lot of people figured that I should have married someone more my own age. Uh, what's 20 years? Has she ever said anything about it to you? No. Why should she? Well, you're our best friend. You know, I've been wanting to talk about this ever since we got up here. I figured that up here, away from everything and everybody, that I could tell you how much I appreciate Doc. Uh, your strength of character. Eva's still young, and she hasn't shaken herself down yet, and some other man might have. It's been a good 10 days. Good for all of us. Look. It's gonna go over. You got the car keys? They're in the car.
two are pretty lucky. Anybody else down there? Hold on. Careful now. Come on, it's all right. It just goes with my job. Uh, there we go. Now, let me see here. Oh, yes. Well, that, that feels just like a simple fracture. I'll put a temporary splint on it. Are you really lucky? This could have been an awful lot worse. Oh, you've got a point there. Uh, get me a couple of flat sticks. Right. The man here says we're lucky. Yeah, we're loaded with luck. Here, Doc. Oh, those are fine. Here, put this one here. Like all that. right, all right. Come on, come on. Snap Will it you up. Shut up! I'm trying to think of what we got to do. We'll take you into Moose. It's only about seven miles from here. We'll get some x-rays of this arm. Oh, that's all we need. I'll have to take your tie. It won't make much of a sling, but it'll do temporarily. I'm gonna fix the sling now. Whose car is that? Mine. Give me your wallet. Come on, give me your wallet. I need your registration, driver's license. drive any place without that. Here? Too public. Well, the snow will cover him over. The roads will be closed. Nobody will be coming in here till spring. You said it was too public, Red. You guys camped around here? Don't well, make me use my head, will you? Let's go. Look, why don't you just take the car and leave us here? We don't know who you are or anything about you. Well, you had plenty of time to think. How about it? Coming back? Well, maybe we can get this thing straightened out and everything will be fine. And Dandy. Don't forget the Dandy. Oh, yeah, Dandy. What do you say, John? This is what they call a point of no return, friend. Suppose you knew you were going to get killed if you didn't talk. Wouldn't you talk? Would I talk? I'd be a one-man filibuster. You think I wouldn't? I think you're sore. I think you're sore because we caught up with you. Either that or you're one of those bird brains figures it's a trend to be brave or something. All I can tell you, it's still up there. Where up there? I don't know. Well, just let me put one of his feet in, John. Just one. He's not fooling. When Red was a kid, they didn't have enough playgrounds. He's a sort of an adult delinquent. I've seen him in action. How are you at belly shots, Red? <laughs> or do you only shoot at backs? Red? Go ahead, Red. Pull the trigger. Yes. Manny. Go away. Please. What do you want? 
few honest words. Of you? There's an explanation due. I don't want to hear it. The only thing you'll hear is yourself talking. Start now. You need a doctor. Nice place. I'll try not to bleed over everything. There might be one doctor I know I might reach at this hour. Skip the milk of human kindness routine. Remember me? I've already been set up in Alley One. I'm back from the wars, honey. I'm a vet. How'd you get tied up with those two? You don't belong in the picture with them, and you know it as well as I do. Yeah, money. Sure, that's why you did it. You did it for money. Do you always answer your own questions? And why did you help them? I wasn't helping them. And so what if I had been? What difference would it make? You did something wrong, you were running away. And you were bound to be caught. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. Are you being clever with me again? I'm not the clever type, Jim. It is Jim, isn't it? Give me a light. What did you do? How did you get yourself involved with the police? Police? You thought they were police? Weren't they? That's why you took off so fast. You know, I, I came here, I came like a homing pigeon. I didn't even look up your address. I must have remembered it from the bar, from your driver's license. That piece of paper you gave me. They must have it. And they'll figure I came back here. Look, you can't stay here. Put something on and pack a bag. Oh, you're thinking nice people don't run. They stay, call the police. That's exactly what they do. Right now, two men are coming over here to pull you out of your respectable little world so fast, you won't know what hit you. So call the police. Maybe you'll be all right tonight, but what about a week from tonight or next month? Why me? I used to ask myself the same question, why me? Because you're unlucky enough to talk to me tonight. You've got to trust me. I'm trying, Jim. Believe me, I'm trying. It would be easier if I knew about the men. I'll tell you about them when you dress. Leave the door open a little so you can hear me. in Wyoming last winter. Doc Gerson, a friend, a good friend and I were helping these two men. The car had gone off the road. Better kill those bedroom lights. I won't be able to see. Back in the dark. You were saying their car had gone off the road. And they made us take them back to our camp. Okay. Okay, over there, over there by the fire. Shooting, then suicide. That way keeps us clear. You surprise me. It's this mountain air. I always think better. <laughs> I like it, Red. That's neat. Real neat. I don't know what you two have done that makes you so desperate. Are you scared, Doc? I should be. But I can't believe this is happening. Why, we haven't even had our second cup of coffee. Oh. I'm scheduled to perform an operation in Chicago, Monday. We were driving into Moose tonight. To call my wife and tell her we were leaving in the morning. It's no use, Ed. We were only trying to help you. Oh, this is very sad. This is strictly downhill. Shut up, Fred. You got a point, friend. You're entitled. A man shouldn't die unless he knows he's got a reason. 
And you boys got the best. See, Red here and me pulled a bank job, real sweet. No prints, no identification, no previous criminal record. We gotta protect that, see? We wouldn't want to get a bad rep. And we got about 300 grand right here. So try to see it our way, will you? Okay, Doc. I'm gonna count to five. You run. When I get to five, I'm gonna shoot. You got the picture? Hold it. One, two, three. <laughs> I never could count past three. <laughs> oh. You didn't get your second cup of coffee either, did you? Go ahead. Now, don't say I didn't ask you. Is your car paid for? I just got it. Oh, you're lucky. You won't have to make any more payments. <laughs> Give it to him. Turn around. Sit down. Now don't look back here, just look straight ahead. Now here's the action. I'm gonna toss you a shell. Now you pick up the shell, put it in the chamber, and you pick up the rifle, you look it straight in the eye, and you push the trigger. How do you like that? I give you the perfect suicide. <laughs> I won't do it. I'll tell you why you're gonna do it. If I have to work you over from back here, I figure it's gonna take me five, maybe six rounds to finish the job. So make it easy on yourself, see? Clean, quick. Come on, Red, quit playing around. You decide. Want me to start counting, like for the doc? I'll be in the car. Are well, you holding this up, Buster? Oh. You're thinking maybe a quick try with the rifle, huh? You want to try? Well, go ahead. Go ahead, try. Give me a minute to get used to the idea, will you? Oh, no, that's too long. Half a minute. Okay. Come on, Red. shot bounced a piece of rock off my skull. Looked like I was a goner. At least they thought so. They drove off. inside. Not that stupid.
You're taking things too easy to suit me. I don't like it. Well, model, huh? Yeah, they all carry these portfolio things. Compton Model Agency. Dunkirk 73899. That's all we need. Oh, you're smooth, John. Real smooth. Yeah, well, I got a soft side. The guy can't have everything, can he? Nope, I suppose he can. You fell asleep, honey, so I got dressed and I came over here. It's a lucky thing that I did. Ben, what time is it? No, about 4 a.m. Talk about intuition. I told you he was getting ready to make a move. Is he still there? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a girl with him, Laura. My hunch is beginning to pay off. I told you I didn't figure him to be in this thing alone. Look, honey, you better stick around the apartment today, see, in case I have to call you in a rush, you know, and get you to pack your suitcase and bring it to me over here. I don't know, Laura, but, well, I've got a hunch it's going to be cold. Now, look, you pack a bag for me, honey, huh, and then go back to sleep. You still have enough coffee in that tent house you're renting? Yeah, yeah, sure, coffee, dancing girls, everything. Okay? Night, hon. You should have met a nurse tonight, not me. Is that the, um... Oh, I'll take it. My laundry. What on earth are those? Sock stretchers. And they talk about women. You see you had a, an early call tomorrow? Uh-huh. I'll uh, get you some sheets. This will be yours. I can't imagine how many times I've stood here and watched it get dark. I know how every shadow falls. Telephone pole, rooming house across the street, that old iron fence down there. If every night I got that much closer to tomorrow, my chances got that much better. What's tomorrow, Jim? Mind if I, uh, tomorrow? Maybe the next day, they open up the roads to the spot where we camped. Snowplows have been up there two weeks now. I've been waiting for weeks for that date. I get within one day of it, and bingo, I gotta run into those two. Maybe you've forgotten. Organized society has a department for your kind of complaint. P-O-L-I-C-E. Okay, let's say you're the police. I tell you, two strange men have a wreck. The doc and I run out to help them. They shoot the doc, wipe the prints off the rifle, try to make me kill myself. Sounds like a nice routine case, doesn't it? An everyday occurrence? Things that really happen are always difficult to explain. You haven't heard anything yet. There I was coming out of I don't know how long. No motion, no nothing. And then I, I remembered. to get Doc's bag so I could patch myself up. Patch myself up? It was a way out. 
Somehow they'd taken the wrong bag, taken Doc's bag and left the money behind. I could drop this satchel on any police desk and say, find the men who stole this and you'll find the men who killed the Doc. I know I had the bag with me. I must have dropped it someplace, maybe near that shack. Well, can't you remember? No. It started to snow pretty hard. I got in the moose by morning. A ranger had already found Doc's body and my rifle. They were looking for me. Well, right then and there, you should have told them the whole story. Doesn't check what boogeyman with a bag full of money? Well, they must have left footprints. The snowfall covered them. Well, you should have shown them the wrecked car. The car they were driving. That still doesn't put them on the spot with me. Now, Maria, I needed a witness, something that could talk. You know, something like that satchel full of money. And there was another little detail. Doc Gerson had a young wife. She had written me some indiscreet letters. The Chicago police found them in my apartment. Look. My prints checked out with those in the rifle. Did you love her? Doc and I were old friends. Is that an answer? Somehow I find it very important that you believe this right now. I might have been looking, but she was shopping. And I never went any further than that, believe me. I believe you. I rode freight south to New Orleans and got a job on the waterfront. Changed my name to Wilson. Then I went west to Dallas. Drove a truck there for a while. Finally, I came out here, bought myself some paints, and holed up right here. Changed my name to Vanning. Finally, after about a month, I got my first assignment. You know the uh, payoff? Eva, that's the doc's uh, wife, she puts up a reward for my arrest. I guess she could afford it. She inherited a quarter of a million without ever leaving Chicago. You said you were going to Wyoming as soon as the roads were cleared to find the money. Why does it have to be tonight? Because they got to me. But you got away. They get to you once, they... They get to you again. Anyway, I'm scared. You don't know what it is to live with, with your back against the wall, Marie. Inside, you change. You really change. Here, I'll get those sheets. Always meeting the wrong man. It's a talent. Forming what the psychiatrists call doomed relationships. Meaning me? You won't quit? I can't. They caught up to me tonight. 
Sometime I'd like you to meet my girlfriend. The one who stood me up for dinner tonight. They tell me I can get a bus through to Moose, Wyoming. We're expecting your clearance on that run along about 9 or 10 tonight. How much? One way. No round trip. 39 or left. One. Two, please. Gate three, 11.05 tonight. Excuse me, one of the... Has my buddy been here yet? Young fellow about six feet tall, a gray suit and a blonde hair. Yeah, you just missed him. Oh. Did he, uh, did he pick up the tickets? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think you can still catch him. He's probably still in baggage. Oh, right. Uh, what time does the, the bus leave tonight? Gate 3, 11.05. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Underneath, a handkerchief linen chemise top. The new look of back interest and the open effect toward the back of her coat around the decolletage. Her violet toque gives the new heavily flowered effect. One eighty-nine. Who's wearing one eighty-nine? I am. Out you go, honey. Our next mannequin is wearing one of the new slim sheaths of pale, pale beige linen. It has a double-breasted button effect in the front. The back panel is slightly contoured, buttoning just under the knee. The perky little white piquet bow under her chin sets off a large brim sailor of rough straw. She has been beautifully accessorized in tones of pale beige. Notice her gloves and slim shoes. Go. Over there, honey, the beige chiffon, number 372. What time is it? 1.30. How many more changes have I got? Three. Can't you wait till 2 o'clock? That's just it. I told him to meet me here at 2. Oh, we'll be finished by then, honey. You know me. Never off one second. Aren't you ready yet? Hurry, hurry. You're on right away. This next lovely little dress, suitable for a summer afternoon, is in tones of soft, soft peach and beige. It has a 
has three-quarter sleeves, a high neck, and beautifully, softly flowing skirt of tiers and tiers of chiffon. Number 18. Loretta will help you in, Jody. Oh, your company is here. They were asking when you'll finish. They? Frankly, honey, it's none of my business, but a girl like you? These two look like unmatched bookends. Where did they go? They said to stay around. Mrs. Lipton, please send me in right away. Well, fast as you can, skin in number 18. Our mannequin's dress is a ball gown of electric blue start chiffon. The gown has the very new look of high in front, low in the back. The uneven hemline has been brought back from the 20s. Her midriff is wrapped in electric blue velvet. Our mannequin is wearing a ball gown designed by Jean Louis. The gown is a slender sheath of mauve sequin worn with one of the very new Capri collared capes of yards and yards of multicolored organza. A beautiful symphony in shades of mauve and pink and deeper cerise. Last night you said I should have met a nurse. What you just did back there was pretty effective first aid. Mrs. Lipton must be furious. She runs the show. Meet one of her favorites, number 18. $650 worth of sequins. Mrs. Lipton's never seen what a 45 can do to a set of sequins. I want to stop at a surplus store and pick up a pair of jeans and a jacket and some field boots. It's going to be pretty cold where we're going. Yesterday, my biggest problem was how I was going to break a date with a fellow I know for tonight. Of course, I could call him up and tell him I can't make it. I'm on my way to Wyoming in a pair of field boots with a man that's wanted for murder. If I left you here, they'd find you in no time. Even if they didn't, I'd still want to go with you. You're the most wanted man I know.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be stopping for breakfast in a few minutes. It'll be a 30-minute stop. I hope you all had a good night's rest. I'm glad I'm not a man. I have to face that every morning. That's where you're wrong. You're going to have to face that every morning the rest of your life. Is that a proposal, sir? I don't have any real right to ask you, I guess. Do you think I'd let you get away now? After spending two of the most unusual nights of my life with you. Hey, haven't I seen you someplace before? I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah? Got it. A couple nights ago, on Hollywood Boulevard in Las Palmas. Remember, I asked you for a light. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're waiting for a bus, and uh, we talked about the tropics. Sure, sure, that's it. Oh, what are you doing here? I'm just going to ask you the same thing. Oh? I'm on my way up to Butte, Montana, see about a job. I uh, didn't notice you. You on the same bus? Guess so. I didn't see you either. Hey, you better snap it up if you want some breakfast. You know, these boys stick right to schedule. I'll well, see you, huh? Serial number still in the upper right hand corner. And when we get off, I want you to go to Charlie's, a garage. He's got cars for rent. Right. Where will you be? There's a church at the edge of town. I'll be hanging around there somewhere. This won't go on. I'm glad we got rid of those two characters. And yeah, what makes you think we did? The next stop is Moose, Wyoming. We'll be there about 10 minutes. You can get a fine view of the mountains from this little town. The Alps of America, that's what they're known as, rising vertically 7,000 feet above the valley floor. The highest peak is 13,766 feet. Does the name Rayburn do anything for you? Is it supposed to? Hey, uh, let's take a little walk, huh? Who are you? Well, my name's Fraser, Ben Fraser. So what? I work with the police. Oh. Well, what do we do now? Well, we, you know, walk a little, talk a little. About what, you're taking me in? Well, there's more to it than that. Well, you're the doc. That's funny you should say that. You know, I always wanted to be a doctor, always wanted to help people. You picked a great way to do it. Anyway, now I want you to help me. Look, just take me in, will you? Take me in. Come on, we'll walk. I'm tired. More tired than you know, Mr. Fraser. To tell you the truth, I'm glad you finally caught up with me. Now, will you please just take me in? You're getting a little monotonous with that take me in routine. Hey, come on. No, I've had my eye on you for quite some time. Where's the girl? She's not in this. Oh, how do I know? I just met her. Oh, how do I know that? You might have known her before. Well, it's something I do know. A man with $350,000 doesn't sit up all night with a set of watercolors to meet an agency deadline. And I've watched you ordering dinner, picking out the hamburger instead of the Philly mignon. It must be kind of tough to pass up the shrimp cocktail. What kind of a cop are you? I didn't say I was a cop. Did you ever hear of bankers' blanket bonds? No. Well, look, suppose you knock off a bank. 
The bank don't lose the money. They're covered by a bond. My company does. They've got to pay back every penny. Insurance, huh? I started up in Seattle. The only trail I had was a sequence of stolen cars. I finally found the last one. It had Washington plates. Back the road up there, ways. Then a little further up, the rangers discovered the body of a doctor. They claimed a man by the name of Rayburn, a commercial artist from Chicago, killed him. But I figured it otherwise. You figured otherwise? How come? Know what these are? Ajax. That's right, I'm a 38 automatic. I picked up these two up there by the campfire. Only the doctor was killed by a bullet from a 30-30 rifle, so these don't figure. Except, uh, except for one thing. One of the bandits up in Seattle was carrying a 38 automatic. You read. And one of the men that followed you out of Robinson. Well, then somebody must have seen him in Seattle. I see, when they stuck up the bank, he, he pegged a shot at one of the tellers, started to go after him. Well, he missed the teller, but I picked this up in Seattle. The mark of the firing pin on this one is the same as the two I picked up there by the camper. All right. Start talking. I'm ready to listen. I want to hear everything. Every move, the whole business, right from the beginning. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Fraser. Now, well, maybe we can put each other on the starting line now, huh? With the money. It's out there somewhere. Incidentally, uh, what should I call you? Art, uh, Jim? Might as well make it Jim. I get to like it better all the time. Are you gonna come with us or we're gonna go with you? Well, I'll go with you under one condition. We charge you off the car on my expense account. Okay. Cutback's just up there. Well, we pay taxes, so the police can carry them for us. Let's go. I remember climbing a fence like this and crossing a pasture. Uh -huh. Look at those prints. Can't be anybody but them. You better stay here, honey. That's got to be the shack over there. around here someplace. I remember I stopped and rested. Well, here I just counted it. You're unlucky, fella. You're not lucky at all. A little soggy, but it's going to dry out, I guess. One more minute. Two, maybe, at the most. <laughs> We'd have been gone. Oh, yeah. You got a bad sense of timing. Who are you? Friend of Annie's? Boy, that makes you unlucky, too. I'll tie him up and leave him here. I don't get worried. There's snow plows around here. There'll be a road gang in by night. Well, my way is sure. And noisy. You hear a shot for 10 miles here. The 
Tie him inside. There's a rope there. Come on. Right, come on, come on, come on! You're a shot in the mountain. So what? That could be some kid hunting you squirrels. Know. To. He ain't paid his bill yet. You gonna do like I tell you, Red? Okay. Okay, one thing at a time. Put your hands behind your back. Yeah, I worked for a guy one time. He owned a yacht. He used to sit out in the stern of that thing, smoking cigars, soaking up the sun. He was a big man. Real big. Yeah, that's for me, a Pacific. Say about a 40-footer. Diesel power plant on it. Go around from island to island, look them all over. And I pick one out for myself. All for me. You wouldn't stay there. You'd start thinking about another bank. Another $350,000. Nah. Not me. I wouldn't come back. What are you going to do with your end of the money, Red? I'm going to set up a scholarship at Harvard. OK, sweetheart, here she comes. Put it away, Red. You still soft on vanning? Come on, finish tying them up, all of them. You don't like me, do you? No. That about all I can take of you, Red. After we split up this loot, I don't want to have to look at you anymore. Well, why don't you like me? Don't crowd it. No. No, I, I, I gotta know. I gotta know real bad. I feel better you put that rifle down. Maybe. How about you put yours away first, huh? What do you say, Red? I got a mind to make you an extra belly button. The gun, Red, come on. Now, you're asking for it. I'm in an asking position. <laughs> you know, we could stay like this all day. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> well, we could start something, huh? See how we make out. How'd you like that? All right, you play it your way, I'll play it mine. Still will do, Red. Remember when you shot the dock, how you counted? Well, I'm going to do that now. I'll count to three, see? You don't put that away by the time I get to three, I'm going to kill you. Right? One. Two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, boss. <laughs> I'll give you two minutes. Three at the most. Not going to take me that long, friend. It won't take the federal agents any longer than that to move in here. Now, let me tell you a funny story. Hold it, Red. I can kill you easy now, couldn't I, Red? You don't know how many times I thought about this. Every time I thought about it, I pulled the trigger. But I'm not going to unless you move. Stop!
to surprise those federal men of yours haven't shown up. I'd be very surprised if they did. See, uh, I forgot to call them. A bag full of money looks kind of small out there. Isn't it? Sitting out there all by itself. It does now. Let's go keep it company. Thank you. 